Legalizing the illegal, Israeli MPs pass a new law allowing settlers to keep Palestinian land. Is Israel on a path to annex territories in the occupied West Bank? And what are the legal consequences? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Controversial at home and condemned from abroad, Israel's parliament passed a new law on Monday retroactively legalizing settlements built on Palestinian land. International law says the settlements are illegal and Israel's Supreme Court is expected to overturn it. But the fact that it passed at all shows the strength of Israel's right-wing parties and their opponents say the shift signals a loss of hope for a two-state solution. Imran Khan reports from West Jerusalem. After months of debate, 60 Israeli MPs have voted in favor and passed a controversial settlement bill legalizing some Israeli settlements on private Palestinian land into law. 52 MPs voted against. It was hard fought with some opposition MPs saying they didn't want anything to do with such a law that legalized Israeli occupation of privately owned Palestinian land. For Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, it's a significant political victory. It's also one of the few times the Israeli parliament has passed legislation on the occupied West Bank, which is under Israeli military control. <laughs> We are voting tonight for the connection between the Jewish people and its land. This whole land is ours, all of it. Israeli settlements are illegal under international law. Despite that, half a million Jewish settlers live in the West Bank and another 100,000 in occupied East Jerusalem. They say the Palestinian landowners will be compensated. However, the land was snatched from them and negotiations never took place, say the Palestinians affected by the new law. Officials from the Palestinian Authority long condemned the bill before it was even law and now say they have no choice but to take their case to the international community. The Israeli human rights organization, Yesh Din, said the land regulation law approved today is an unlawful, immoral law sanctioning land grab and rewarding thievery. The International Criminal Court is one way the Palestinians can go, but the Israelis, who are also opposed to this bill, are hoping the Supreme Court will strike the new law down. The Attorney General has already said that he cannot defend it. The law has divided Israeli politicians, angered Palestinian leaders and drawn international condemnation. Now, the Oslo Accords signed in 1993 divided the occupied West Bank into three sections. The red part of this map includes both areas A and B. They're under Palestinian civil control, but many of the cities and villages are separated by Israeli checkpoints, so Palestinians often cannot travel within these spaces without passing Israeli security. The other 60% of the occupied West Bank falls in area C. It's under full Israeli civil administration and security control. Palestinians are in charge of their own health, education and economy here, but need Israeli permission to construct any buildings. They very rarely get that permission. Most Israeli settlements are in Area C. Well, let's bring in our guests now. Joining us from Jerusalem is Alan Baker. He is the director of the Institute for Contemporary Affairs at the Jerusalem Center uh, for public affairs. He's also a former legal advisor to Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In Ramallah, we have Mas Mustafa Barghouti. He is the Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative and a former Palestinian Information Minister. And Ben White, who is a writer, journalist, and researcher specializing in Palestinian Israeli conflict, joins us from London. Good to have you all uh, with us, gentlemen. Uh, Alan Baker. Um, the, the Israeli Attorney General, uh, Avichai Mandelbit, has called this law unconstitutional and a breach uh, of international law, which allows the, the uh, seizing of, of private land in, in areas Israel seized in the 1967 uh, war. If this law ends up getting struck down by Israel's Supreme Court, and there is every expectation that it will, even from right-wing politicians, it begs the question, what was the point of it? I mean, what purpose does it serve 
uh, other than to further antagonize Palestinians? Well, look, Israel is a democratic country, and, and uh, the, 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 the parliament is composed of, of uh, parties from all colors and shades. And uh, today's uh, Israeli parliament uh, is composed of, of a, a large number of uh, members of parliament that uh, uh, feel that this was the, the correct thing to do uh, without necessarily knowing whether it will actually materialize after being examined by the Supreme Court. So you're saying it's all politics? To a very large extent, yes. But there is a, a, an element of ideology in this that uh, um, the, these members of the Israel's Knesset genuinely believe that uh, Israel has uh, uh, the rights to, uh, uh, to, to have this land. Uh, the, the, you know, this is an issue, a, a negotiating issue. The Israelis and the Palestinians have agreed to negotiate this. Uh, they want to anticipate this negotiation by carrying out a, a, a unilateral act, which, which is, is not in accordance with the agreements between Israel and the Palestinians. Mustafa Barhouti, I want to put this same question to you, but frame it a, a little differently. If, if this is going to be struck down by the Supreme Court, and it's largely a symbolic uh, gesture for, for some sort of political gain in, inside Israel, um, what, what, what does it mean for Palestinians? Should Palestinians be, be, be concerned about it? Well, first of all, there is no guarantee that the court will do such a thing. But uh, most important is to look at this law as part of several steps that Israel is taking during the last uh, few weeks. Uh, first of all, let me say that Israel is not a democracy. No country be a dem can be a democracy while it is practicing apartheid. And Israel is practicing apartheid against Palestinian people. It's practicing racism. It's practicing occupation since 50 years. It is violating international law and international resolutions. So it's not a democratic country. No democracy ever would allow the theft of privately owned land of people. And Israel, this law is about allowing and legitimizing uh, theft of privately owned Palestinian property for the sake of settlements. They were confiscating our land for the sake of security. They transformed a lot of our land into what they call state land and then confiscated it for the sake of settlements. All of that is not enough, it seems to be. And now they want to start confiscating private land for the sake of settlements, legitimizing 120 new settlements in addition to the 157 settlements that are already in existence. Uh, this law is about appropriation of people's land uh, uh, in an unlawful manner. It's about annexation. It's about Judaization of the West Bank. It's about killing the very last opportunity of two-state solution. But realistically... And as I said, it's not separate from the fact that Israel, Israel what, what has just can, legitimized... What can Palestinians do realistically to fight this? Because as you say, this has been going on for years, decades even. What, what, what can they do to stop it? I think what we can do is that immediately the Palestinian, uh, the PLO, should make a referral to the International Criminal Court. Israel must be judged at the International Criminal Law uh, Court for its violation of international law. Also, we think that all countries that support two-state solution and witness today Israel's annexation of Palestinian land and witness Israel's imposition of new settlements on the ground and new settlement units and preparation for annexing parts of the occupied territories to a new law that Neftali Bennett is preparing for Mali Adumim should immediately impose sanctions on Israel. Nobody can say that they support two-state solution and witness silently the execution and the assassination of the two-state solution. The only way to stop Israel is to impose immediately sanctions on it. Many other countries in the world have violated international law and they were subjected to sanctions. Why not Israel? Why Israel should be allowed to be above international law and impunitive to international law? This has to end. And BDS is the best way of dealing with that. Ben White, what is your take on this? So first of all, I'd just like to address this, uh, this idea about the Supreme Court. Um, and there are some risks in just in dismissing or downplaying the significance of the new law on the basis that the Supreme Court might uh, cancel it. First of all, that process could take months or even years. 
Uh, secondly, there is, as, as Mustafa mentioned, no guarantee that the Supreme Court will actually cancel the law. The Supreme Court, historically speaking, has proved itself uh, profoundly complicit with various uh, violations of international law uh, and with methods of Israel's colonization of the West Bank. Uh, and apparently one judge uh, has already hinted that uh, he personally uh, is not of a mind necessarily to cancel it. Uh, and I just want to also say something about what kind of a new development this is, because it's made the headlines uh, and it's seen as a stark departure or, or a radical new development by some. Since 1967, when Israel's military occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip began, the Israeli authorities have used a variety of mechanisms with which to displace Palestinians and colonize Palestinian land. That's included physical expulsion, but it's also included so-called legal tools like military orders uh, or uh, Ottoman land uh, legislation, a sort of legal hodgepodge. Uh, so in that context, last night's law is actually part of a long-standing apparatus uh, of, uh, of legal methods that Israel uses with the singular purpose of displacing Palestinians and colonizing their land. But there is a sense in which it is new, practically and politically speaking. Practically, of course, this law serves to retroactively authorize uh, previously technically unauthorized settlement outposts. And this has never been done before on such a scale. And it is also the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, legislating to take away privately owned land of non-citizen Palestinians. So in that sense, practically it's new. But on the political level, this is uh, emblematic of a, a brand of hard-right nationalist Israeli politics that is on the rise uh, and is uh, symbolized by comments made last night in the Israeli parliament by an Israeli government minister who, praising the law, justifying it, said, this whole land is ours, all of it. All right, I want to broaden this out a little bit more now and talk about um, uh, settlements and, and the history of, of, of settlement building in uh, the occupied West Bank and, and what it means for in all of this. The illegal Israeli settlements have expanded into Palestinian territory at a rapidly uh, increasing rate for decades, as we've been saying. 147 Israeli settlements have been built in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem. And the number of people living there has more than doubled in the past 30 years. Around 400,000 settlers live on Palestinian territory in the occupied West Bank, with another 200,000 in occupied East Jerusalem. Some are living in settler outposts. Nearly 100 have been set up in the West Bank without Israeli government approval. So uh, that graphic giving an idea there of, of um, how, how much, settle, how much of, uh, impact settlements have had um, in this area. So, uh, Alan Baker, I want to turn to you. Does this, and this picks up on the point that Mustafa Barghouti made earlier, does this kill the, the, the two-state solution or any chance of a two-state solution? No, no, not at all. And, and uh, look, you know, I'm here as an international lawyer and not as a propagandist. So, I, I, you know, I can't go into the propaganda that we've heard from both from uh, Mr. Barghouti and uh, uh, your other speaker from London. Uh, and I wouldn't even start because it would take too long. What I'm saying is that, look, the whole issue of uh, the permanent status of the territory, uh, excuse me, I, I didn't interrupt you, so I'd appreciate uh, respectfully if you'd allow me to finish my sentences. Uh, the whole issue of the permanent well, don't status don't say that we are saying of, propaganda, uh, we are saying our facts. I'm sorry, uh, so I'm sorry, you're interested in pushing your BDS pet project, go ahead, but this is a, a, a discussion between serious yes, people, very much and so. if you're not prepared to be serious, then, then please d d keep quiet and let, let me answer the questions that I'm being asked. It's now, not up to you to decide if I am serious or not. You see, you are behaving now as a colonialist as a person who practices occupation and wants to suppress <laughs> other people's opinion. Respect well, look, our opinion so that may, we can respect you. May I ask the moderator? Well, look at this behavior. Right, it's moderate. so condescending if, to look if, at a person like you. If there's no, right, if there's Baker, no intention... I'll, I'll just let you uh, finish your answer briefly and then we'll, we'll turn back to uh, Mar uh, Mustafa on this. So please. Okay. The whole, is the whole issue of uh, the, the, the settlements, as well as the permanent status of the territory, it's been agreed upon with the PLO that this will be determined in negotiation. It's not even Palestinian territory, it's disputed territory that well, the Palestinians themselves the, have agreed to negotiate. It's occupied territory 
So uh, under international law, it's illegally occupied territory, Alan Baker. That, that's a fact. So no, uh, I'm Israel sorry. might dispute I'm sorry, it, but you're it's wrong. not, it's I, not look, disputed anywhere I'm a, outside I'm of I'm an Israel. international lawyer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm an international lawyer, and with all due respect, you're not an international law, nor is uh, Mr. Balkuti, whose expertise is perhaps BDS and telling lies, but it's certainly not to be an international lawyer. And so neither you nor he nor anybody else can tell me I think what you are the international liar, law says. Now, the, Don't accuse others of being liars when you are, are lying subject, constantly. Uh, the territories are subject to negotiation. And, and this is exactly what the whole aim of the two-state solution is. And uh, if, if Mr. Barghouti and uh, others want to continue and go ahead and have this negotiation, then they should do whatever they can to encourage uh, uh, their own people to cooperate and come back to a negotiating table rather than try and run to the International Criminal Court, which has absolutely no jurisdiction whatsoever to deal with right. the issue of these territories because the Palestinians aren't even a full right. party to the uh, statute of the International Court. Mustafa Barghouti, your response. Well, the two-state solution is based on a compromise, and the compromise is very painful to Palestinians because it means establishing a Palestinian state in West Bank, Gaza, including Jerusalem, which is only 22 percent of the land of Palestine, less than half of what we should have had according to the same UN resolution in 1947, which gave Israel its legitimacy. So we accepted half of what we should get. Yet now is killing, Israel is killing that compromise. How can we speak about negotiating about something that Israel is changing every day? For 25 years, there has been negotiations. And during these 25 years, the number of settlers have increased from 111,000 to more than 700,000. During these years of negotiations, Israel used negotiations as a cover for its system of apartheid and the annexation of the land and the killing of the possibility of solutions. Oh, really, really, when you really, ask two people to negotiate the, and at the same simply, time you change facts on the ground rubbish. constantly, please let me finish. When you continue to change you, facts you on the ground while we are negotiating, means. this is nothing but this is nothing but a way from Israel sides to kill the possibility I'm sorry, of sir. solution. Let you're me say, spouting propaganda. If Israel is killing, you're, you're if not Israel is Alan Baker, just, just let Mustafa finish his point, You are impolite, and please. you can you. You are impolite and you should shut up. But he's spouting because, because right, you are no, impolite and when you say we are saying propaganda, you, what the are two you saying? Are not, and obviously you are not talking agree about this, lies. But there's Let no need finish. for name calling. Let me finish my Mustafa, point. Mustafa, just if you can just finish Let your point. Let me finish briefly. my point, Lom, please. Let me say. Let me just finish my point, please. Uh, what I'm saying, if Israel wants to kill the two-state solution based on 67 borders, then we have every right to demand to have Jaffa. Because it where was does part it say 67 borders? The Excuse me. Resolution. Excuse me. Where this is in a the fact agreement? of life? Does it say if you, if 67 you want to borders? Kill, if you want to kill the compromise right. of two-state solution, right, I want to bring in you are impolite gentlemen, I, and you are not allowing me to finish. I, I, if you I want to kill passion, the two-state solution, uh, on this then issue, there will be it's, one it's solution, obviously, which is one state. It's obviously one that you, that you both care deeply about, but I want to bring in Ben White uh, here and get his take on this. And I, and I want to ask you, Ben, as well. Um, we haven't talked about uh, uh, the implications of uh, a Donald Trump administration and, and, and what, uh, what his take is on, on all of this. What do you, what do you expect from uh, U.S. President Trump? Just, just before turning to that question of Trump, I just want to make something quite clear for, for the viewers here. Um, it is a little bit rich for Alan Baker to accuse others of propaganda. He's presented himself as uh, an international lawyer when he himself lives in a West Bank settlement. Uh, and on the question of international law, so what? It's Israel's not illegal. And, and I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, on the, on I'm the, sorry. If it's I not just, illegal. Sorry, you've, you've, sorry. It's not illegal. Uh, sorry, I haven't. Right. Inter Alan, as, just, as you yourself let, said, I haven't interrupted you. You're presenting me as a criminal, but um, you're wrong. So, you're if I just carry on uh, on the question on the question of uh, international law and Israel's occupation and the illegal settlements. It's Alan Baker's opinion versus the International Court of Justice, the high contracting parties to the Fourth Geneva Convention, no. the United Nations Security Council, the International You're Committee wrong. of the Red Cross, uh, and so on. And of course, it's not just actually uh, a matter of a dry legal argument. This is something with immediate human rights impact on a daily basis. The settlements, as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch and many others have documented for a long time now, the settlements uh, constitute an inherently discriminatory regime. Now, on to the topic of what we might expect from uh, Donald Trump. 
Uh, obviously, he's proved himself to be a man uh, uh, where it's hard to know exactly where his next policy or idea might come from, and he's got that element of uh, a lack of predictability. But on the other hand, his, the people around him and things that he himself has said have given the uh, Israeli right and the Israeli far right uh, good grounds to believe that there will be even less pressure than there was under Barack Obama on the Israelis with respect to restraining settlement construction, expansion, uh, and so forth. All right, uh, Alan Baker, um, your response to that, and I, and I want to ask you as well, what, what, what does Israel expect from a, from a Trump presidency? Um, because the expectation was that he would be more amenable to Israel's position, but he has uh, brought up concerns about the continued settlement building. As I said, the issue of the settlements is a, a negotiating issue, and it's obviously something that uh, Israel will discuss with uh, President Trump and his administration. Uh, Israel has, has a, a, a feeling of, of more confidence in the Trump administration that Israel will get a, a more a sympathetic ear and more understanding uh, with respect to its uh, various legal and political positions and historic positions. And this is what we hope will happen. But, uh, you know, I'm not a prophet. Uh, as, they, as Ben said, I'm just an international lawyer. And so it's difficult to know what will be the, the outcome of discussions between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Trump. And uh, I, I would hope that the issues will be dealt with very seriously. And without propaganda and without the emotion that the uh, other two speakers seem to but be why so should, intent on but putting Alan Baker, into I this, want to ask uh, you, why should the Palestinians come to the... You say this needs a negotiated solution. Why should the Palestinians come to the negotiating table when Israel continues to build these settlements on occupied Palestinian land? Well, look, you know, you can play ping pong and you can play tit for tat. Why are the Palestinians running to the United Nations to try and establish a Palestinian state not through the negotiating process that Yasser Arafat promised in his letter to Yitzhak Rabin. Uh, why are the Palestinians continuing with supporting and inciting terror? You know, it's, it, it's not, it takes two to tango, and both sides are committed to negotiate the final status issues. Uh, uh, and this includes settlements, and it includes Israeli Jerusalem, right. and it includes... Uh, refugees, and it includes security, and it includes all right. water. Mustafa, so all I'm you... saying is, get back to a negotiating Mustafa mode Barhuti, and your stop response playing to that around briefly, please. with all sorts of imaginary, imaginary sure. right. games Alan Becky, that you, will you, get you made your point on that now, Mustafa. Yes. Well, I think as you have heard, actually now we've heard propaganda, because when you say that Palestinians should go to negotiations, who's refusing, refusing to negotiate? In the last three months, there was an invitation by Mr. Putin, and Netanyahu rejected it. There was an invitation by France, and Netanyahu rejected it. There was an invitation for negotiations by Sisi in Egypt, and Netanyahu rejected it. It's Israel that is rejecting negotiations. And meanwhile, it makes well, no sense the whatsoever Mr. to negotiate while Hamas Israel is grabbing the land, is practicing theft. You are a war criminal. Shut up. Let me Let finish. You have to shut up. Because you have to be polite and <laughs> let, respect let others. Let the Palestinians Please, get up. their act together. Uh, let me say that. Let them let unify say that into a unified way, leadership. The only and then there'll be somebody to negotiate is with. Is to enforce on Israel. Rest. Are you finished? Go, go ahead, Mustafa. What I am going to say we're, is we're that the only done. way to impose peace in this place is to force Israel to respect international law. You have just and the. And the people who are watching us have just seen an example right. of res disrespect to other people, dis disrespect to international law, disrespect to the proper behavior of human beings. And that's because there is a colonialist thinking, a colonialist right. thinking of we've people who are committing we've war crimes on the land of Palestine. We've got to leave it there. And this we should are be out stopped of time. by imposing lot, sanctions on Israel. Time talking about this, but we are going to have to uh, leave it there. Thank you very much, Alan Baker, Mustafa Barghouti, and ben, ben White. Thanks very much for taking part in what uh, I'm sure you agree has been uh, a very spirited discussion. That is it for Inside Story. Thanks very much for being with us. Remember, you can watch the program again anytime. Visit our website, aljazeera.com, and for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Remember, you can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Seeker and the whole team here, bye for now.